Hello and welcome to my Christmas Eve special. My name is Aether, and today we're going to be talking about the Christmas calves themselves, Alan and Lance, units I consider to be the best in the game. I consistently see these two units placed within the top 10, and while that is all good and dandy, I feel this is a severe underestimate of their in-game utility. Before we get into that though, let me lay the groundwork for what I consider to be integral factors to ranking Fire Emblem characters. These factors are bases, availability, growths, movement, combat ability, non-combat utility, and supports. Note, these are not ordered in terms of importance, and I will not go through them one by one as I analyze Alan and Lance. I will instead reference these factors as I make my argument, and use them as a framework to exemplify Alan and Lance's overwhelming influence on the game. With that being said, let's get into it. Alan and Lance are by and far the most interesting characters to rank, so much so that I argue that they'd have to be ranked as if the two of them were a singular character. This is a very strange thing to do, as only one Cavalier can promote in Chapter 8, while the other is going to have to wait until at least Chapter 15, drastically altering how you may rank these characters. But despite this, Alan and Lance's uniqueness shines through. Alan and Lance are the only characters to have near identical growths and bases. Alan and Lance are the only characters of the same class to join on the same chapter. Alan and Lance are the only characters of the same class to join on the same chapter and have supports. Alan and Lance both have a support with the Paladin Jagan of the game, Marcus. And most interesting and unique of all, Alan and Lance are the only characters in the game that can defy the concept of average stats. Take a look at the graphic on screen. This displays the average stats of a level 20 Cavalier Alan and Lance. Alan being on top and Lance being below. The biggest difference between the two arises from the following stats. Strength, skill, and speed, with a differential of plus or minus 3, while all other stats have a differential of plus or minus 2 or less. Though a differential of 3 is significant, considering the caliber of enemy units during the first 8 chapters of the game, Alan and Lance still relatively operate as the same character. Now, why do I bring this up, and how do Alan and Lance defy average stats? Well, let's think about it this way. Let's say that there are 3 possible outcomes for a unit. They get stat screwed, they get average stats, or they get stat blessed. Note, the degree to which the unit gets blessed or screwed is irrelevant. Let's just say, in some way or another, the unit is statistically overperforming or underperforming. For all individual characters, we assume the median. It's unfair if we evaluate them based on a good personal experience, but it's also unfair to evaluate them based on a bad personal experience, so we rely on the expected values. Alan and Lance are a bit different. As we discussed earlier, Alan and Lance are very, very similar, to the point of almost being the same character. If we were to apply the three outcomes for individual stats to the two units that are Alan and Lance, we get the following set of possibilities. Now, what's the significance of this table? Statistically speaking, your average growth-based unit will be blessed 33% of the time, will be average 33% of the time, and will get screwed 33% of the time. If we evaluate Alan and Lance together, we see that 56% of the time one of them will get blessed, 89% of the time one of them will be average, and only 11% of the time will they both get screwed. Why is this so significant? Because it means you have a growth-based unit that will only get stat screwed 1 in every 10 playthroughs and will be blessed 6 in every 10 playthroughs. Given that it is more likely that one of them gets blessed than it is that one of them doesn't get stat blessed, I'd propose that they should be ranked as if they were stat blessed, as again, it is more statistically probable. This is compounded by the fact that Alan and Lance are the second unit in the game to be given the opportunity to promote, the first being Rucker or Diek using the Hero's Crest found in Chapter 7. Or Wade and Law if that's your cup of tea, but that really ain't it, Chief. Even given average stats, Alan or Lance are monsters when they promote in Chapter 8. But for reasons discussed above, Alan and Lance say fuck average stats and go sicko mode on everybody. But even still, they still have more to offer. One thing that Alan and Lance have going for them that no other top tier does is their match made in heaven supports, or to be more specific, their supports with themselves and Marcus. Here's a list of supports for the top tier competitors for the number one spot. Note, dancers are excluded as ranking the pure utility units against combat units like Alan and Lance is very difficult and is almost always arbitrary. There are a couple big problems facing these top tiers. The only unit that can keep up with Percival's movement is Cecilia, but you don't exactly want her on the front lines. The only unit that can keep up with Milady is Zeiss, but there's a 3 chapter gap between the two and Ballistas and Archers are abundant past chapter 16, and there's only one Delphi shield in the game. Rutger's support with Diek is abysmally slow and there's a 5 chapter gap between Rutger and Fur. 
the only unit who can even come close to having the same impact with their supports as Shauna, but again, there's a nine chapter gap between the two. Without a doubt, unquestioned, Alan and Lance have the best supports in the game. They build fast, they're convenient, and most importantly of all, they make Alan and Lance even more overpowered than they already are. Even still, I think all of this is still not enough to prove Alan and Lance as the best in the game. There's still one missing piece to the puzzle. The one thing I think every tier list gets insanely wrong. Availability. This has just got to be the most arbitrarily defined category in tier lists, especially in FE6 tier lists. The fact that Mecha put Marcus at number 3 over Alan and Lance is absolutely ridiculous, so much so it pains my soul. In fact, let me paint a picture to exemplify how truly ludicrous this is. In FE6, there are a total of 31 chapters if you are attempting the true end. Though, the final map doesn't really count for much considering Roy is just going to one-shot the final boss anyway, so let's say 30 chapters in total. Let's be generous to Mecha and say that Alan and Lance's performance in chapters 1 through 7 is a 7 out of 10, and that Marcus's performance throughout these chapters is a 10 out of 10. Lance slash Alan, counted as a single character, would have a total performance score of 49 at the end of chapter 7, while Marcus would have a total performance score of 70. Now, let's say our promoted Alan slash Lance, whoever ended up being better, has a score of roughly 8 out of 10 for the rest of the game, even though it's more like a 9 out of 10, and Marcus has a score of 6 out of 10 all the way up until the final chapter, which is some complete bullshit, but it's for the sake of argument. Alan and Lance will have a performance score of 233, while Marcus will have a performance score of 208. Furthermore, even if Marcus's average performance is bumped up to 7 out of 10 from chapters 8 through 24, which is some hot fucking garbage, he'll still fall 2 points short of Alan and Lance, and that's after heavily overestimating in favor of Marcus, and also heavily underestimating Alan slash Lance. And don't even get me started on Milady and Percival. Milady joins exactly midway through the game, and Percival joins a couple of chapters later. If we go by the same logic we used with Marcus, Alan and Lance could have an average score of 5 out of 10 per chapter and tie with Milady and beat Percival, given that Milady and Percival have an average score of 10 out of 10. People legitimately have no idea what they are talking about when they're discussing availability. Why does Marcus get so much credit for his early game contribution when Alan and Lance are almost just as impactful and also contribute much more significantly in the late game? For true ending, Milady misses 14 chapters and Percival misses 17. Furthermore, while we're on the topic of Percival, an average Alan slash Lance promoted after chapter 15 is arguably just as useful as Percival himself. His stats will be worse and so will his weapon ranks, but Alan and Lance should easily have A tier support by that point in the game, which not only buffs the recently promoted Cavalier, but also allows the other Cavalier that was promoted in chapter 8 to snowball even further. To conclude this segment, availability is completely arbitrarily defined and it appalled me how poorly it has been handled within the context of FE6. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we have one last character that stands in the path of Alan and Lance, Rutger. Rutger is damn deserving of his number 2 spot. Within a vacuum, I'd say he's hands down the best combat unit. But this isn't a vacuum and we have 7 different criteria to consider. Number 1, bases, which goes slightly in favor of Rutger. Number 2, Growths, which also go slightly in favor of Rutger. Number three, movement, which easily go hands down to Alan and Lance. Number four, availability, which is in slight favor for Alan and Lance. Number five, supports, which also go to Alan and Lance for reasons discussed earlier. Number six, combat utility, which also go in favor of Alan and Lance, though I recognize this may be a bit controversial, due to weapon triangle control, support bonuses, and also movement options. And then finally, number 7, non-combat utility, another point for Alan and Lance for their ability to rescue and their Kanto ability. And with every last top tier dethroned, we have Alan and Lance sitting at their rightful spot of number 1. I hope you gained some useful insight from this, and I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.